Hi everyone and welcome to another Microsoft Flight Simulator SDK tutorial. In this video I'm going to be looking at how to add some signage to your airports and there's two methods I'll be going over. The first is these taxiway signs you can see off to the edge of the taxiway and the second is the runway number markings that we get on the whole short line here. So first before we create any taxiway signs we want to check the to delete option on our airport. So if you come to the scenery editor and open up your airport object, then come over to the properties panel and open to delete. Scroll down in here and you'll see that we've got a checkbox called delete all taxiway signs. So if you're modifying an existing airport you want to check this so that your existing taxiway signs are deleted when you add the package otherwise you'll end up with duplicated taxiway signs. With that covered we can also enable something to help us out when making our taxiway signs. So if you come up to the scenery editor and click rendering we can enable show taxi names and that just shows you the taxiway names and just makes it a little bit easier to remember which taxiway is which without looking at an airport map. And with that done we can add a taxiway sign. So if you open up the objects panel in the object type, come down to taxiway sign and just hit add on that. I'm going to drag it over to where the taxiway sign should be. And then note that in the scenery editor we get two errors. We have one on the airport object from an invalid child and scrolling down to where the taxiway signs are we can see invalid label here and that's because we need to actually enter something into the taxiway sign for it to be valid. So if we click the add a new section button and just type something in here we can see the, ta the taxiway sign appears and the errors have gone away in the scenery editor. So my taxiway sign is just backwards here so I'm going to rotate that around so it's the correct way and just position it the over the marking on the ground there. So back in the properties panel we have the sections here and we can add as many sections as we want. And these sections have a number of options. We've got location, direction, mandatory, information and runway. We've also got unknown and remove. The remove option, if you just select that, will remove the section that you've added. And the different section types give you different backgrounds and font colours on the sign. So I'm going to start off with the location for this sign. We location Charlie. Then the direction. It's going to be the taxiway that we're crossing, so we're crossing taxiway alpha here. As we can see here, you get a black background with yellow text, and that's the location, and then the yellow background with black text is the direction. You can also see what characters you can enter into the content box by hovering over this little question mark here. So you have got a variety of things, we've got spaces and dashes, we've got the actual characters, and we've got a variety of arrows and some borders. So for this sign, the location is generally in a border, so that's square brackets with the character in the middle. And then for our content on the direction, we're going to have arrows pointing in the directions of the two taxiways, like so. I'm just going to add another section here so we can see some of the other options. So we've got various arrows here. And you'll notice that some of the characters, such as the apostrophe and the tilde key, they actually open up the console so you have to close that every time you press them which is a bit annoying. We've also got the square brackets which are borders like I've already shown and we've got the vertical line which you can't actually see on here so I'm going to change it to direction. And we can see there we've got a separate a line which allows you to add sections in on the same type. So if I just remove this section here, the sign is complete. We've also got sizes for your signs so the default size is size 3. We've also got size 1 which is a nice small sign and then size 5 which is a very big sign. So I'm just going to leave that as the default which is size 3. Finally you can also type in the raw label field so as you can see here this corresponds to the section that I've added using the drop downs and the text boxes so we've got L, lowercase l for location, we've got our bracket C, taxiway Charlie and then we've got D for direction and then arrows A for the taxiway direction. So note you can't actually enter any lowercase characters into these content boxes because that will give you an error. As you can see here, invalid label and the taxiway sign disappears. And that's because they correspond to the location, direction and the other section types. So you must only type uppercase characters or numbers and the special characters into the content boxes. So if I just turn around here, we've got another taxiway sign. So I'll show you an example of a runway sign. So this is one that's proceeding onto a runway. So I'm going to type this into the raw label. So we've got runway 20 to 02 and we're location taxiway point Charlie 1. As we can see there that appears after directly typing into the raw label and I can just rotate this as needed. 
to position it as it should be. Like so. so. Let's move on to runway markings on the taxiways. So as we can see here, I've got a hold short point, and this is a taxiway point with the type hold short. You may want to add the runway numbers to the pavement here, like you've seen possibly in some other airports. So if we come over to the objects, in the object type drop down, choose painted line. You get a lot of options here for painted lines. And I'll go over these more in a future tutorial. But the one we're interested in for today is the hold short marked options. So we've got hold short backward marked and marked L, the underscore L is for lighted. And then we've got forward marked and forward marked L. So if I choose forward marked L and just click add, you get a little round dot on your cursor. And this is similar to the apron and the polygon tools. So to use this, you need to hold down the control key and then left click to place points. So I'm just going to place this across the taxiway like so. And then for the final point, either double click or hit the enter key to confirm that. So straight away, we can see that my taxiway sign is backwards. So I'm just going to go back to the type and flick this around. So it's whole short backward marked L. There we go. And I'll just drag this into position so it matches the existing hold short line. And what you might want to do also, once you've placed the hold short line, is just select the taxiway point and then change that to hold short and no draw. So you still need a taxiway point here because that's what the ATC and the AI use to direct you around the airport, but the hold short line can be hidden and then you can just see your painted line here. You may have noticed also that as I move the painted line around, the hold short markings will move as required and they just stay on the taxiway like so and they automatically update for the runway that's proceeding. So here we've got runway 20 to the left and 02 to the right. If I was to grab this taxiway line and move to another runway, you can see there that the taxiway markings have updated because we're at the 20 end of the runway and they've adapted correctly. So I'll just move this back. Like so. So that's how to add taxiway signs and runway markings to your taxiways in your own airports. And that's it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to see more videos like this. If you've got any questions or if there's anything you'd like me to cover in future videos, do let me know in the comment section down below. And until next time, thanks for watching.